everyone welcome to wool and spinning my name is Rachel it is Saturday September 18th 2021 and I want to welcome you to this place welcome to new viewers of the podcast thank you so much for checking us out and for being here and welcome to returning viewers of the show I really appreciate you checking the show out week after week and thank you so much for just looking at what we do here and paying attention and following along and uh, what you guys can do to help the podcast is to take a minute to hit the like and subscribe button. And of course, welcome as always to our Patreon community. You guys are the ones that keep the lights on week after week, month after month, and I really appreciate you being here. It means that I get to do what I love to do and basically be here with you all. And um, it's it just is I am I am so filled with gratitude that, that you guys are, are here week after week and that you participate so thank you so much and uh, thank you for the messages that I got over the past week just from people in general comments on the on the show and um, just participation in general nothing in particular just you know it, it's just really lovely to be interacting with everybody and to be uh, participating with everybody week in week out it's it's a bright spot in my days as our days go on and as mike and i choose to live more and more intentionally and to kind of take charge of the things that we really value and really um uh, want to participate in in our day-to-day -day lives um, as him and I both make decisions about about sort of going forward and, and where we want to be uh, the messages that I receive the slack channel uploads of photos that people are working on um, comments on YouTube text messages you know spin group whatever it is I just think yes yes <laughs> and it's pretty amazing to be able to feel that way um, week in and week out um, living Mike and I, when we were away a few weeks ago, one of the things that we kept talking about was was sort of the idea of, you know, what what does this mean? Like, what does living more intentionally mean? And, you know, for us, it was, um, you know, spending more time with the kids and having them at home more. Um, I was finding the last couple of years, especially when the kids were in school, um, in traditional Monday to Friday school, I mean, um, I was really missing them by about Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning. I was like, okay, like kind of drumming my fingers on the, on the counter and kind of waiting for them to come home because I just really enjoy spending time with them. And a friend of mine, we were talking yesterday, her kids are in the same program school program as my kids are now in. And so I was getting some tips and pointers from her and whatnot. And she said, yeah, like I really like spending time with my kids. I like the people that they are turning into. She's like, are they who I expected? Absolutely not. Um, she's like, they have their own quirks, they have their own personalities. And she's like, I'm really enjoying getting to know them. Um, and as Mike is sort of figuring out what he wants to do with his career, it's been really neat to sort of watch him, uh, as part of the conversation, sort of what, what we both want to spend our time doing and, and, you know, what that looks like. So thank you for letting me do what I do and be able to, to do what I do. Uh, we've got a very busy live chat this morning. I actually just came in. I realized what time it was. Um, James has soccer this morning, so it's kind of a mad rush to get him out the door at 7.30. The show needs to start at 8 o'clock, and um, I had gone out for literally five minutes to check in with our neighbor because something happened with um, our neighbor's dog, and um, they, the, their family are one of our closest um, friends and something happened when we were away with their dog and so um, she's unfortunately been um, um, put down and so they were telling me what had happened and all of the background and all the stuff because I knew that something had happened but we hadn't had a chance to talk about it so then all of a sudden I looked at my watch and I was like oh my goodness I'm so sorry you guys I have to go <laughs> so I was feeling a little bit a little bit frazzled there for a minute, but thank you for, for tolerating that and for, for being able to 
to sort of, I find when I sit down to podcast and I'm a little bit frazzled, it, it, it takes a minute for me to sort of get into a rhythm and to shift and transition into something new. So we do have kind of an exciting morning because Eve is hosting Samantha at her house for the weekend. So we might be getting some, um, little bit of, uh, what's that word? Some cheekiness from the two of them. I'm looking for a better word than that, but there's a word that I'm looking for and I can't think of it. Um, but they're both going to be posting from one account unless they both have a device, which just, you know, would crack me up. Um, we, last week I had promised that we would do our Shetland spin this week. So this is part of the breed and color study, sorry, the breed study that, uh, goes with my new workshop on the school of sweet Georgia, uh, spinning sheep breeds. So if you are interested in having a look at that content, um, please, uh, follow the affiliate link in the show notes. That's how, um, those of us who have, uh, workshops on the school of sweet Georgia, that's how we get paid. Um, and how our work is, is valued. Um, so I really appreciate that you guys. And, um, we last week, there was so much to catch you guys up on and there was so much to share that I just didn't, we just couldn't get to, uh, spinning. So this week, next week and the week after, um, we will be spinning up the rest of the primitive breeds that are part of the spinning sheep breeds kit. So we've been working through this all summer. I actually thought, and I guess I just didn't count properly that we would actually finish all of them in the summer. I was kind of, I don't know what I was thinking anyways, regardless, we've got three more to do. So three more weekends, which is, I, I have to admit this, this is the stuff that I love. This is what I love spending my time on. So if that's what you guys like spending your time on, we can absolutely work this into the podcast and kind of, you know, do this indefinitely with other stuff. Um, just let me know and, uh, please, please like give me some feedback about it. Cause I, you know, I don't, I don't know what I don't know. You know, you guys, um, please tell me. It helps with the direction of the podcast, what you want to see, what you want to hear about, what we want to spend our time on. Um, this past week, I published the post from uh, on Patreon for patrons about the Sanjo Silk Spin Box. It's the exotic spin box. It's the new spin box that Diana very kindly put together. And, um, there is a discount code for patrons of the community. You do not need to be a patron to buy the spin box, but you do need to be a, uh, patron to get the discount code. So I put the post in the live chat. It is there for you guys if you missed it. And if you're, um, especially if you're a patron of the show and, um, Oh my goodness, Dorothy and Pat, you guys are so funny. Not sure if Sam has arrived at Eve's place yet. There's Sam. Hello from Cornwall. Um, <laughs> uh, Eve says if she disappears over the next few days, please call the police. I guess if, uh, if, if Samantha has like a sketchy second life that we all don't know about, um, and she's actually like a serial killer or something, um, we'll know where Eve went. Um, the, <laughs> you guys are so funny. So Diana says for the uh, spin box from Sanjo Silk that uh, she ended up getting two. She couldn't resist the blues and the reds. So funny story, Diana, I wasn't gonna get a box at all because I have, I've been spinning so much of this stuff. I've had so much of it in my stash for this past year. Diana and I um, have worked together to um, put together the first spin box and then for the second one, uh, I went into the store once things were a bit more open and I was able to actually like do it with her and put it all together with her. So I'm super excited about it. But I was sort of like, you know, I've got, I've got quite a few of these things. I've got some silk hankies, which we're going to be doing as a community all together in December. And, um, so save your silk hankies in your box for December and your Mawatas save those. And, um, I thought, well, maybe I'll get the undyed box and I could go through some dyeing or something and and then I was thinking about it and we were away and I knew what was coming up in the box and I ended up buying two. <laughs> so I ended up buying, um, the Casbah. That was one of the colorways and the other one that I bought and I couldn't pick, to be honest with you, I just couldn't choose. So I bought the one that's the reds and the golds. And I think that was the Casbah colorway. 
And then the other one that I bought, and I don't think that it's photographed, but I saw it in the store, was the metals, the one that's the metals. So it's these gorgeous steel colors, like steel. It literally looks like metal. It's these gorgeous like grays and dark um, sort of steely blues. Very, very, very similar to my sweater behind me. So um, it has arrived. Do you guys want to see it? Um, I wasn't going to do an unboxing. But if you guys want to see um, see what this stuff looks like, I can show you. Um, because I've got my two boxes here. I asked Diana not to send the packaging because I don't need it. And um, I also bought some silk and linen. Um, it's not here. I've already taken it out. Um, some silk and linen for my... Um, um, I'm teaching a flax workshop um, in November, actually. And so I uh, bought some, some silk and linen to, to spin with them. Yeah, Diana, I, I'm the same. I, I, I've never really found my love for, for silk hankies and, and, um, spinning that stuff, spinning them. So I'm hoping that as we work through it in December, that maybe it'll ignite sort of a love of them. Um, so Charlotte says, yes, please. Silly question. You're right. You guys, it was a silly question. Dion says, yes, please show us. Um, okay. Oh, and Ruth too. You guys are so funny. So this is the Casbah colorway and I can pull it out of the package. I just, I'm sorry for all the crinkling. Um, I asked Diana not to send the packaging because I didn't, I didn't need it. Um, and I thought, you know, somebody else could have the beautiful packaging that they do. So this is the Casbah colorway. So this is some of the silk. This is the hundred percent mulberry silk. Let me just, I don't want to speak to it without actually telling you exactly what everything is. So this is the mulberry silk. This is the 50-50 silk roving. So see how they, 50-50 silk wool roving. So you see how the colors just take totally differently. Isn't that amazing? That's the mulberry. Aren't they just beautiful? My plan is actually to use all of this together in one project. That's my plan. Um, and then these are the, the, the Moatas, the, um, the silk hankies. So this is the Casbah colorway. Isn't that amazing? So those are all of the silk hankies here. So there's about, there's approximately 20 grams of everything. So there's a lot of silk hankies, which I'm really hoping forces me out of my comfort zone to really commit to working with, um, working with them and, and really, um, in, you know, uh, sort of diving deep into them. And then this is the Angora that we put in. This is naturally uh, colored Angora. And this is the camel silk that's part of our camelids study that we're just finishing up this month um, that you guys will have a chance to spin. So we're doing um, camel fiber this month and uh, we'll be spinning this on wool and spinning uh, on the wool circle on Tuesday. We're changing the day of wool circle from Fridays to Tuesdays. Um, I'm sorry if that messes anybody up, but the wool circle live stream is twice a month. And uh, I just... I, I needed to get some stuff off of Friday and um, so I moved the wool circle to Tuesday. Um, so I'm sorry if that messes anybody up, but of course the live stream is always available afterwards. And then this is the metals. So this is the metals colorway. So this is um, same, same idea. You've got the silk hankies, the 100% mulberry or bombix is the other name for it. And the 50-50 wool silk roving. So this really ties up and finishes off our year of luxury. Um, that's the whole, the whole sort of point of this is to finish up our year of luxury, get people spinning this stuff. This is the uh, Angora again. And then of course this is the camel silk. So I'm actually going to, I'm, I'm not going to spin all of this on its own. I'm actually going to combine it with other stuff and do some blends and that will kick off our new year. Um, so our year of luxury could go on and on and on and we could keep going for, for months and months and months and years and years and years. Um, and uh, I've already planned out next year's content because I have to start, you know, lining things up and getting it all organized. But um, one of the things that I think I've really learned about this year, I would love to hear from you guys what you think about um, what your big learnings have been this year. Even if you've just been watching from the sidelines and you haven't actually um, participated actively. Um, I think for me, my big learning has been that my, some of my most favorite yarns and some of my most favorite things to spin 
are blends and blends that, w that we make that are just completely almost kind of random that don't really follow a rhyme or a reason. That's like, well, let's see what happens when you put this with this and let's see what happens when you throw in a little bit of this. Um, you know, that's one of the beauties of, of spinning and, and of hand spinning is that we get to engineer our own yarns. And sometimes from like a, you know, kind of engineering perspective of like actually designing a yarn. They don't make a lot of sense. It's not like you're throwing in this for this and this for this. You're just kind of throwing stuff together and seeing what works. And um, th I think those are some of my favorite yarns, to be honest. So yeah, what 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 have you guys, what, have, what are some of the things that you guys have, have learned this year about the luxury? The other thing I think I've noticed from you guys, um, so this is more learning that I've noticed that you guys have had is that you don't have to be a master spinner to spin this stuff and have good results. Um, those of you who've taken some of this stuff on and done experiments and tried different things, I'll give you guys an example in just a second, um, have really had good results and enjoyed it. And is every single yarn that you make perfect? No. Is every yarn that I make perfect? Absolutely not. But the, uh, I think the um, in the spirit of experimentation and trying things, people have become more and more and more brave. Um, and a really good example, and she's here in the chat today, is actually um, Dion. Um, I think her she goes by on YouTube. I think her nickname is Dij. Um, uh, she uses Dij. Um, she was doing a uh, um, an experiment in the Slack channel of a flax and silk blend, and she had done it before, and then she's doing it again with some roll eggs, and she was posting about it in the Slack channel. Her colors are just unbelievable, just beautiful. Um, but she was saying that, um, you know, she's just trying it again and to see if she can change up. I think she was changing up the ratios and um, playing with, um, you know, just seeing what would happen this time round. Um, that's how you get better. So, um, Angora, no, it's rabbit. Um, the Angora is rabbit. It's not mohair. Um, a great question, Dorothy. The Angora in the pack is, is from, from rabbit. Um, colors are grand. Yes. Um, oh, oh the farmhouse. You know what, Diana? I actually was really torn, um, between Casbah and farmhouse. Um, I was, I was yeah, farmhouse was the in the store when you see farmhouse. I don't know if you've received it yet, Diana. Um, farmhouse is like, yeah, it's a really great color. The metals are gorgeous. Yeah, I was really drawn to it even in the store. Um, yeah, Kim, the silk package is from Sanjo Silk and is linked. I put it up top um, in the live chat for you, but there's a discount for patrons. So it's there for you, Kim. Um, blends are endlessly fun and adaptable. Absolutely. I'm uh, Dej says I'm, I'm, uh, Dion says I'm, I'm, um, I love the play and to see what turns up. Uh, so Dana says I enjoy uh, making some of my own blends, especially with my fleeces. Yeah. And then you can, you know, you don't have to buy a fleece that's across. You can just play. Um, Eve asks what you would do with 34 grams of cashmere. I would just spin it. Um, there is a coupon code. I don't want to post it here on the live chat because this goes um, goes live. Um, Dorothy, it is in the live chat just above, but I will throw it into the generals channel on um, the Slack channel and it's there for you. So let's get onto the wheel and we will look at Shetland today. And then next week we've got, what do we have to spin? We've got some white Jacob and we've got some Icelandic for the next two weeks. Um, and then I will tell you about my spinning project that I've been working on this week. It's a little bit of a comedy of errors and um, I will see you on the other side.
Okay, so we're gonna pivot and we'll go right to the wheel. Um, I already have, let me grab my spinning apron here. I already have uh, all of the Shetland. While we've been chatting, I've actually been um, breaking it up for you guys, like for, to spin and putting it into nests. So I'm just gonna turn here and then I can talk to the camera, I can see the live chat and I can talk to you guys. Um, Nora is upstairs and she's playing Lego. I can hear her, um, rooting through the boxes. Um, she, uh, James had soccer this morning, like I mentioned, and she is home. Uh, we are trying like just to see, you know, if she can sort of handle being home and, um, you know, not having to cart off to Nana's at, at six thirty in the morning to get to, so that Mike, Mike can get the kids to soccer. Uh, get James to soccer. So she's being a big girl this morning. She, <laughs> I made a bunch of tea this morning. I'm, I'm not drinking coffee anymore, particularly. And, um, so if I'm out and I have an opportunity to have coffee, I'll have a cup of coffee, but, um, I'm not really drinking a lot of it anymore. I was finding it was really upsetting my stomach and I was drinking a lot of it. And, uh, it was like, nope, if I'm drinking this much, it's time to let it go. So anyhow, she, um, she asked for a little like traveler mug um, with a little bit of tea in it uh, to take upstairs so that she wouldn't spill it just in case she had a mug and it spilled because she knows that she can't come and ask me for help. <laughs> so cute. So we just did a big Shetland study in our community and people were making amazing, amazing things. And our breed and color study from January to June was, was looking at color as well. So this is white Shetland. So for this, we're sort of just looking at twist and the types of yarns that we're making. And uh, one of the things about Shetland that I find, and I find it actually with Jacob as well. So I'll talk about this plying ball after we're done spinning the Shetland. One of the things that I find is that very, very easily I overspin it. And I'll show you what that looks like. Let me let me sort of go on my default and I'll show you what ends up happening and why for myself I end up feeling like it's a bit overspun. So let me just get my uptake right here and I'm on a ratio of 17 to one. And this is what often happens to me when I'm spinning the primitives, okay? And some of us might really like this yarn, don't get me wrong, um, but I kind of go on this default of spinning this stuff and it's almost kind of like I'm thinking that it's sort of like Polworth or Targi. And I sort of spin it the way that I would spin Polworth and Targi. And it just doesn't necessarily need the amount of twist. And it makes this great yarn. Like it's just beautiful yarn. And I, I you know, I'm treadling and I'm on 17 to 1 and... It just looks like awesome yarn and I'll show this to you guys up here so that you can see it and it just looks awesome right like it looks like just a this would be a phenomenal sweater yarn um, the sweater that I'm wearing is called cozy me it's by Nadia Kretchen and um, this pilled quite badly when I first finish it it's out, out of cascade ecological this yarn if it was spun is like a three ply at an Aran weight which is gauge for this sweater it probably wouldn't have pilled quite as badly so this is a great sweater yarn but when you feel it and when you run your hand down it's a tiny tiny bit wiry it's a little bit ropey so I love it but it's um uh, it doesn't have a lot of elasticity and it's just, it's, it's a little bit ropey and wiry. And I find the same thing happens to me when I'm spinning Jacob. Um, it's just almost like they're a little bit overspun and these, these primitive fibers, they just don't need that much twist, um, to be, because they're just a, they're higher, a little bit higher micron count. They're a little bit, uh, toothier, a little bit. Uh, they're, they're just not quite as fine. Now I work with the medium wools almost exclusively, al almost. Um, and I find that I just get into this rhythm of, of sort of adding a little bit too much twist to them. And then I sort of find that my finished yarn, you know, feels a bit, a bit ropey. So I've kind of learned how to compensate for that and how to, how to sort of quote unquote fix that. And one of the things that I do is I go down to the ratio of 15 to one. So I, and I treadle the exact same way, but there's just a little bit less twist going in, just a little bit less, um, 
you know, it's, it, it's just not quite as marked. And what ends up happening when you compare these two yarns side by side is this one's just a little bit loftier and it's a little bit fuzzier. See how that little bit of just change in my treadling and a little bit of change, uh, sorry, same treadling, same drafting, but different, um, a different ratio. It just ends up a little bit softer. So when I put the other one up next to it, those are actually quite different yarns. The one on top is quite firmly spun and notice that it doesn't really have a halo compared to the lower one. And notice that the lower one, the, the, um, it's, it's looks like it's a little bit thicker. It would knit up at the same gauge because of all that air, it would compact down a little bit, but it would just be a slightly softer yarn. Um, it also is a little bit fuzzy when you look at the, um, at the actual twist angle, there's a little bit of fuzziness between the singles. They're not quite as well defined as the top sample is. And some people really like their yarns, that really worsted spun, um, very obvious singles and really, you know, tightly plied. I have to admit, I'm really drawn to those yarns as well. I really like them. But what I would, what I have been doing is spinning my singles like the lower um, sample but then what I've been doing and I'll see if I can do it um, and then I'll show you again is those light lofty airy singles then get up plied so that it's a more highly twisted yarn and look at that it's got more elasticity and it's a little bit firmer um, but it's still got that halo and that loft. Um, and I just find that those lower twist singles and then up plying so that you still have a balanced yarn, but it's got some a little bit more active twists than you would normally, than you would sort of want. Um, I, I find personally that the difference between those two yarns, especially when it comes to sweater yarns, you end up with a little bit more elasticity and a softer, airier yarn, and you you don't have that that ropiness of the lower one. Does that make sense? So that's just from one change. All I did was change my ratio. That's it. So what I do from there to keep myself consistent is I sort of just start to count after I sort of figure out, oh, my join was terrible. I'm, I'm chatting and talking. Um, so let me rejoin. When, after I sort of get into a rhythm like that and I sort of, I really, I like what I've got. I've got, you know, a, a really airy, light singles. So then I start to count. So I'm basically drafting back about six times and on. So I'm not counting my treadles. I'm sort of, I'm not, I'm not really paying a lot of attention like we do sometimes. You know, we've, we've talked on the show with some of our other stuff. I think when we were doing our Romney and the, um, uh, the, the gray Suffolk that's kind of a Heinz 57 medium wool from the from the area of Suffolk in England. Um, we talked about like counting treadles and counting drafts and figuring out exactly how much twist per inch. But if I'm spinning on sort of a default and just sort of wanting to make a real, you know, just lovely yarn and not being too um, militant about, about what I want to do and, and, and what I'm trying to create. I'll just count how many drafts back approximately I like I want. And then I do a plyback test every so often just to see, Hey, like, is that about what I want? And, and I compare, yep, they're basically the same. Okay. On onwards I go. So it's about six, cause my treadling doesn't change. Um, you know, once you get into a good treadling rhythm, um, your treadling is pretty much the same. It, it's usually your hands that start to change. And um, it's usually, you know, your hands will slow down or 
Um, you'll start to sort of get a bit lazy um, with what you're doing. And so I just sort of keep paying attention. You know, with that, um, as I was talking, I was noticing that my distance to draft was getting a bit longer. Um, so my yarn was getting a little bit, a little bit thick and thin, um, not quite as consistent as what I like. So spin for a little bit longer, watch my, my drafting distance. And sure enough, I'm back to my really super consistent yarn. I just shortened up my distance of draft a little bit. So what that looks like is instead of pulling back too far, you see how now I've got a thin bit. Let me zoom in for you guys. So if I go back a little bit too far, you see how it gets kind of thin in there. Um, and then I draft back, you've got a, you, it's, it's hard to see, but this is quite thick. And now you've got a thin part and a thicker part. You can see that that's a little bit denser on the camera there. So if I just shorten up my distance to draft just ever so slightly, just a little bit, like we're talking like millimeters, you know, half a centimeter, all of a sudden your yarn just becomes a little bit more consistent. Now my singles is much more consistent. There's no thick and thin bits. And all it took was just shortening up my distance to draft a little bit. But keeping my treadling the same. I'm not worried about, you know, making sure that I have exactly the same twist per inch in every single inch of, of this yarn. I want to just enjoy spinning this. Shetland is one of my most favorite um, wools to spin. I could spin it all day. Uh, Shetland, Jacob, and Icelandic, honestly, you guys. Um, I went to the fleece auction last weekend, and uh, my friend Elizabeth and I, we each got, so we got, uh, she ended up bidding, and she bought a Shetland fleece and a Icelandic fleece, and we're going to split them. So super excited about that. So we're going to figure out getting together and getting them washed. So I've got, I've, I had sort of a, a clump of short bits come through here. So normally I wouldn't bother, but because we're chatting and I felt it, I'm just going to go back and double draft by untwisting and just kind of drafting it out a little bit and thinning that out. These wools are very, very forgiving um, because they're, they're not, um, they're not too long. They're not too short. They're just real workhorses. Honestly, does anybody have any questions? Oh, awesome. Elizabeth, she's, uh, swatching handspun Shetland for a sweater right now. That's fantastic. Let me just turn because sometimes it's easier for me to see. Um, would the top yarn? Yes, they both would actually. Um, they both will plump up when with the washing. Great question, Dion. So she's wondering if the if the top yarn. So the top yarn was the one that was uh, slightly tighter. Um, it was a higher twist yarn at 17 to one and um, it would plump up actually. And the bottom one, if I didn't apply it, it would plump up a ton and it probably actually would be a little bit too low twist for a really hard wearing sweater. So if you want like a barn sweater, um, we talked in spin group, um, back in the summer, Pat, who's actually in the chat today. Um, she was doing a, I think it's a Shetland sweater, Pat, if you can just let me know, I'm pretty sure it was Shetland. Uh, sweater and she's doing all of her sampling for it and she wants a barn sweater so where she can work with her horse and she can be out there mucking out stalls and just really a sweater that's going to last for years and years and years and so we were talking about different types of um, uh, you know yarns that would be really super hard wearing so if I was making a barn sweater and I wanted this thing to like last or I was a Newfoundland fisherman and I was out on my boat I would want the top yarn. I would make it a three or a four ply and I would spin my singles at 17 to one and I would go for a yarn like this, expecting that, yeah, it would plump up a little bit in the washing, but it's not gonna plump up. It'll plump up, but not like something like Polworth or Targi will, but it will plump up more than say um, a Lister Long Wool, for example, or a Wensleydale. Great question, uh, Dion. Um, yes, good point, Megan. Uh, the hallmark of Shetland is that it has a slightly disorganized crimp. The primitives are, are sort of a little bit more towards like they, they have sort of a slightly downy feel where they've got that, that's th not, not the true three dimensional crimp that you get in the downs, but sort of going more toward that, that, that way. So, uh, Megan's saying you need some air in the yarn to really take advantage of that feature. And that's absolutely correct. I think that's one of the reasons why I like them so much because I love the downs. You guys know how much I love the downs. And um, 
one of the things about the downs that I really enjoy is the fact that you get these really fuzzy looking yarns where you don't have that really, really defined singles um, look, those, those strands in your finished yarn. And you end up with these yarns that are just so airy and they're so warm and uh, they can do everything. Excuse me, sorry. And as you become more um, adept at spinning them and you can spin them, you know, long draw, you can spin them short backwards, continuous backwards, short forward, like you can do anything with them. You can really tailor what you want to the garment that you're making. And I find that with the primitives as well. They do everything and they do it so well. So, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Alberto says, I'm still aghast at the not making a perfect yarn comment. <laughs> Does anyone have a source for average crimps per inch uh, for common sheep breeds? Um, the fleece and fiber source book doesn't really say the crimps per inch. Um, they have um, in the field guide, they have a photo of what an average lock from that breed looks like. So like here's Charolais um, and like this is sort of an what the format of the book looks like and they have a a lock there and and you can see against a ruler sort of you can you can sort of count it yourself and they do that for all of the breeds oh there was a thing there so like that one's fin fin sheep fin that we did a few weeks ago um and you can kind of have a look at what the average lock looks like but the fleece and fiber source book doesn't really have like a um you know, this is the crimp, the average crimp sprint. The, the only book that I've personally seen that actually has a chart that has the crimps per inch is, uh, Anne Fields, uh, Beyond Wool. And, um, it's, I don't think it's in print anymore. People have had trouble getting it. If you ever come across it, um, you want to just snap it up, but that's the only book that I've ever seen, um, that actually has, the a, a chart with the cr average crimps per inch of some of the major wools um yeah uh the field guide to fleece is sort of like um uh the fleece and fiber source book is like your textbook and then this is like your field guide which makes sense because of the titles but it's just a teeny tiny little book it's the size of my head um it's much much smaller i find this really helpful uh, to keep in my bag, um, keep with me when we're um, away, especially if I want to look something up and I know that I'm going to be looking at, at fiber. Um, I went to the fleece auction on Saturday with the intention of not um, buying any fleece, so I didn't take this with me. But if I had gone with the intention of buying fleece, I would have taken this with me. And um, if you don't want to invest in the source book and it's just like too much because it's, you know, it's an expensive book and you're just kind of not ready, I would highly recommend at least getting this um, if you want to make spinning wool your primary thing that you do. Yeah. Um, as you're buying fleece, will you do a prep video? I'll, I'll try. Yeah, I'm not, I, yeah, I'll try for sure, Eve. Um, do you, I think your favorite thing to spin is whatever you're spinning right now. Yes, absolutely, Megan. Um, I think we've said that for a long time. I think most of us feel that way. Like, you know, if you're spinning, you know, delicious cashmere, that's your favorite thing at that time. Um, could you please tell us what yarn would be closer to Jameson and Smith, uh, two ply jumper? Um, Josie, do you, do you mean like in terms of the, like the breed, like what, what wool, um, that would be? Cause if, if, or are you talking about yarn structure of these two? I think you're talking about yarn structure of these two. Um, if I were to, if I had to choose which one is most like um, Jameson and Smith two ply, I would say the lower twist one. Um, I just knit the, well, not just, it was last summer. So it was over a year ago, but I wear it all the time. Diana will um, attest to that. My pink velvet, um, which is a pattern by Andrea Maori. It has the pink, the blue, I, I did it in coral from Stashed Yarn, which was Jameson and Smith, and then the um, teal yoke with the color work with the flowers. Um, that was Jameson and Smith. And I would say that the yarn that would be most, most like that of these two would be the low twist one. All right, what other question? You guys have lots of questions today. Holy smokes, this is just awesome. Um, Lulu was wondering, this is a side tangent, um, but would you have... How would you adjust this advice if you were spinning a super fine um, or, a, or a standard Shetland? Um, 
you know, I, I don't think that it would change Lulu particularly. I think it would be more that you, when you're working with a fleece, there's different parts of the fleece that are going to act a little bit differently and you're going to have different lengths of locks. You're going to have different features. Like some of the wool that's up at the neck is going to be different than like what you get sort of more towards the rump, softer, coarser. Um, you're going to have to do, um, you're going to have to sample and when you're skirting and when you're looking at the fleece and whatnot, you're going to have to decide, you know, um, you know, you can do a few things. You can divide it up so that some of it you use for one project, some of it you use for another, or you pile it all in together, mix it all up together and sort of work with what the average is at the wheel. But you, you really have to do some sampling. Um, there's just no way around it when you're working with fleece. Um, even when you're working with, with comb top like this, it's pretty standard. Um, you still kind of just need to get on the wheel and spin some and, and sample it. But I would start with, um, you know, the goal or the intention of making an airy yarn. Uh, Shetland is one of the best wools for color work because you can spin these just gorgeous yarns and then you get these color work, you know, sort of almost watercolor like effects. That's why sweaters like that are designed by um, like Marie Wallen, for example. That's why her sweaters work so beautifully. It creates this watercolor effect, effect with the pixelation of the knit stitches. And um, it's because the yarns are, they're woolen spun and they just have that fuzziness to them. So yeah, de de decide on what you want to make and then work your way backwards. I think that's what I would say. Diana has a great question. Is there a wool breed that you take a pass on? That's a great question. Is there anything that I've spun that I really didn't enjoy? I can't think of anything. I think when I first started spinning, I found some of the um, wools that were mediums going into kind of red, um, rug yarns. I found some of those really challenging. I know, I'm not a big fan of Caracool. It's not my favorite. And I don't know if it's that I haven't spun it enough or um, it's just not my favorite. I don't love those really true, true, true double coated fleeces. Um, I really don't like spinning outer coat. So like the Caracool, if you, we did this for our uh, 51 yarn study a few years ago where um, we did the outer coat, the inner coat, and then we did them together. And those yarns were real like rug yarns. So like think carpet yarns that I ended up making with this gorgeous lamb's fleece of caracol. And I thought this is gonna make beautiful yarn, blah, blah, blah. No, you start spinning it and it's, it's carpet yarn. And I just, yeah, I didn't like it at all. And I still don't like it. Um, so it'd be interesting coming back to it again, if, if my I, opinions would change. Um, oh, that's good to know. So, uh, Anne Fields books, we have a copies in our guild library. Um, a lot of guilds over the last 18, 20 months have been really struggling as you guys know. And, um, I was going to sort of put a bug in everybody's ear, ear. A lot of guilds are, are sort of making the decision and making plans to not meet in person, um, and to keep their guild meetings and whatnot on um, online and on zoom and whatnot. And like our guild is doing that. So for those of you who've not ever sort of had access to guilds because they're too far away, or you don't live in an area where there's guilds, reach out to those of us who are part of guilds and find out if there are guild programs that are going to be offered on zoom. And if that is something that you'd be interested in and just being a part of a guild community, because like our guild, for example, like, you know, people are signing up from sort of the greater Vancouver area who normally wouldn't be a member because they couldn't make it to meetings and it was too far and now we're on zoom. So reach out if that's something that you guys would be interested in. Um, okay. Lots of chatter about, um, do you recommend letting in some twist too? I'm spinning the Jacob short forward letting twist in. Yeah, absolutely. Great question, Suzanne. So, and, and letting the twist in between your drafting fingers and your fiber supply can often make a really airy, lovely yarn. So that's a great, um, thing to think about for sure. I'm going to pivot a little bit and, um, oh, that's lovely. I didn't know that. So this was before I was involved in the in the um, in our guild. Diana said Anne Field actually came to the, our own 40th uh, guild celebration in 2011. I didn't know that. That is amazing. Um, yeah, rest her soul. That's amazing. Uh, Frances says her least favorite is uh, Herdwick. Yes, Herdwick is a tough one, but you know what? 
who was it in our community? I think it was Marjorie. She did, um, she was spinning Herdwick as part of uh, Katrina's, when she was still doing a fiber club, um, she was, she, her fiber club offered these like weird and wonderful wools that you just normally wouldn't have a lot of access to. And one of the months was Herdwick. And so Marjorie was trying to figure out what to do with this yarn, because it's basically rug yarn or carpet yarn. And Marjorie made these phenomenal, just awesome crocheted baskets. And um, I, they're, they're on my queue, they're in my list. I'm not a crocheter, I need somebody to help me <laughs> to read the pattern so I know what to do. But that's my plan with those yarns. I've got two sets of yarns, they're both Herdwick. They're both very, very like carpety. They would be phenomenal for little baskets for um, in uh, the bathroom or on the counter or whatever. And the, because of the colors, because of course it's Katrina, just phenomenal colors. Um, I thought even like putting them on the coffee table or whatever would be really neat or holding, you know, pens and pencils. Anyways, I just haven't gotten to it yet, but Marjorie found a use for some of these yarns. So yeah. All right. Um, so I have been spinning Jacob. Um, I started this when we were away because remember how I'd said to you guys that I forgot the spinning sock six packs box. I left it at home and I didn't take it, although I am working on it now. I, I took it with me this week everywhere that we went. And so instead I've been spinning up 100 grams of Jacob. And this is part of my breed and color study. Um, that, that some, some of my breed and color study content will go live for our teaching content in November. Um, I'm not going to get it all done because of what I've chosen to do. So it's going to go into January um, as well, which I'm actually kind of excited about because I feel like I can really delve deep into the breeding color study uh, this time around because I had some high hopes for what I wanted to do. So this is actually from World of Wool. I've had it in my stash for a really super long time and it's this gorgeous dark, dark, dark brown Jacob. So I have spun this, this yarn, um, I kind of took a, a page out of Diana's book actually. Oh, thank you, Diana. She's gonna help me with the crochet. Um, I took a page out of Diana's book and I pulled out all of my spindles that were uh, basically some form of a drop spindle. So they, these singles are spun on my turtle made Turkish spindle, which is about 35 grams. So it's, that's this spindle here. I'm not putting it together properly, but you guys get the gist. So this spindle, I guess I kind of have to, this spindle, uh, this spindle is a Kapar spindle from Wayne Kapar, uh, rest his soul. Um, this is about, I think this little spindle is about 18 grams. It might be 22 grams. So 35 grams, 22, 23 grams. And then my, Bos my Bosworth spindle, which is about 22, 23 grams. And I also spun some of the singles on my Hound Design lace spindle. So I spun these singles on four different spindles. When I wanted a change and when I was sick of a spindle, I just went to a new one and just kind of kept it interesting. And I took all of these with us on our trip and I just kept swapping between them. Um, and so all of these singles are kind of spun on those four spindles. And I wound my plying ball, I was so proud of myself. I got all this fiber spun up, I was all excited. And then I opened up one of my spindle boxes that has all my stuff in it. And I was like, are you kidding me? And Eve, um, Eve and I were working on some sweater pattern modifications on Friday and I showed her what had happened and she was like, oh no. Um, she had exactly the reaction that I, that I needed in that moment, so thank you Eve. Uh, I found a whole bunch of fiber that I had split and pre-drafted and had ready to go and to take on our trip that I had left at home. And this Turkish spindle is one of my absolute most favorites. Uh, and this is by Eric, uh, Katrina's husband. Um, she gifted this to me. This spindle will always have a very, very special place in my heart because she gave it to me after my dad died. And um, Eric stamps all of his stuff with a heart. And I don't know where the heart is on this, but anyways, um, this is one of my absolute most favorite spindles. And so I had planned to spin a bunch of the Jacob um, using this spindle as well. And this is about 34 grams, I think, um, about, and I'm almost done. I've just got this little bit left. I was spinning it yesterday when we were visiting with our friends and um, she was giving me the rundown on the kids program and, and uh, um, what's worked for them. And so this has been really, really lovely. And I've just got this little bit left and then I'll, I'll wind this into a, uh, a second plying ball, a, a center pole ball. 
I don't know about you guys. I wanted to talk to you about this really quickly and then we'll go into community participation. But when you guys pull your turtle off, so in the past, what I have done is I have um, pulled my turtle off of my spindle, uh, just like you normally would. But then instead of just plying from the turtle and pulling from the inside and the outside, I've always kind of gone the extra step. And I think a lot of this is because um, my friend Diana, who's in the chat, um, sort of had always sort of encouraged me to do this um, and go ahead and wind into a plying ball instead of trying to wind, um, instead of trying to ply directly from your turtle. Um, what do you guys like to do? Because I tried to ply a little bit of a sample from a one of my turtles when we were away, and everything got super, super, super tangled. And it wasn't fresh spun singles. I had spun the singles um, several days before and it had been a little turtle sitting in my in my box. Um, and when I went to ply, it just, everything started to tangle and, and unravel. So I, I'm just curious. I would just love to hear from you guys because I've sort of always been sort of gone to that extra step of winding an actual plying ball, but I, I'm just curious. Now, one of the things that I have found is sometimes I don't wind a plying ball and I'll just leave them all separate or I'll wind them onto weaving bobbins, um, onto uh, bobbins like this, because if I'm going to ply on a wheel, I'll wind all of my singles onto these, however many it takes. And then I'll put them onto my little bobbin winders, um, lazy Kate that I have that my dad actually made for me. And, um, I will just ply off of those. And, um, but my brake band on my Susie is broken, which you guys know, and it came in the mail yesterday. So Mike and I are actually gonna replace it today. And then I can get some spinning done because I am halfway through a plying project on my Susie and I can't do anything. So, cause the brake band broke. So I'm curious, I'd love to hear from you guys. And then uh, we'll go into community participation. Mm. So Dorothy says she winds directly onto a bobbin from the turtle. Uh, Ruth says definitely fewer tangles for, from, a, with a plying ball for me. And, uh, yeah, you're right, Becca. The chat went really quiet for a few minutes there. Anybody still there? She said, I, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, Michelle says Cara cool. Use it for rug weaving. Yes. Um, also the locks can go into a hand woven bed rug. Oh, that's a neat idea, Michelle. Thank you for sharing that. Great idea. Linnea says I have a ton of Herdwick. I'm looking forward to spinning to weave. Uh, to become a bed cover, but I haven't tried it yet. Looking forward to it. Very cool, Linnea. Um, I have some car cool I spun that I just have it, can't wear next to my skin. It's way too coarse, isn't it, Nicole? I, I can't either. And I can wear pretty much everything against my skin. Um, I'm going to make felted house slippers. What a great idea. Um, let me just see. Uh, I just read a post about spinning, leaving in or removing the cover hairs, the, the guard hairs, all replies advised to leave the cover hairs to get a very durable rainproof sweater. Perfect for barn, perfect for a barn sweater. Oh, very cool. Um, I'm assuming that's, um, about your, uh, uh, Herdwick, uh, Linnea, or is that about the, the car cool? So, um, Deej says I would do a plying ball for the same reason. Center pull balls always tangle on me. Uh, Alex says inside and outside of the turtle. So she actually keeps it in the turtle. She's, she thinks she's too excited to get plying to rewind. <laughs> I remember being like that when I first started spinning actually. And then I had a couple of nightmarish experiences and now I take the time to rewind. Um, Suzanne says I've only plied from turtles once, but I made two and plied them together from the turtles. So I've seen lots of people in our community doing that where they'll do two turtles and then they'll ply together. And actually a finished yarn that I wanted to show you guys. This was from Katrina for my birthday and I just finished it. It's not even washed. Um, she had given me, uh, these two, uh, nests of fiber and I've been spinning these on my turtle made spindles. And I finished it this, uh, just this past week, but I did ply it, um, on my wheel. Yeah, I did ply it on my wheel. I've been trying to sort of finish some stuff up for spindle spun summer. So this was super, super textured. It's 50% sari silk and then 50% uh, organic pole worth on this gorgeous, like gray purple color. Um, it's a little bit dark, so it's hard to see, but I'll get it washed and I'll post some pictures in the Slack channel. Uh, but really, really fun yarn, just lots and lots of fun to play with. And um, many, many, many thanks to Katrina for that for my birthday because, you know, totally my colors, gray and golden yellow, okra yellow. 
So uh, I'll get that washed in and posted. Uh, Eve says I'm too lazy to wind a plying ball. Uh, Ruth winds them together in one ball. Uh, yes, Herdwick sheep, they're so cute. You're right, Vicky. Uh, Diana says I like to make a plying ball despite the amount of rest after spinning. The singles from a turtle sometimes barf out of the in a tangle, and I don't want that to happen when spinning. Yeah, see, that's what always happens to me. Bye, Becca. Good to see you. I would love to have Gandalf's gray cape from the Hobbit movie. It was made of Herdwick. Oh, Josie, wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah, actually, we were just starting to work through those uh, books with the kids. So James is just old enough now to start reading uh, the Hobbit. And I can't read out loud um, for very long. It really um, irritates my mouth because I've, I've, I've still got a little, a little teeny tiny bit of the burning mouth syndrome still. It's almost gone but I find that reading out loud for a really super long time. So we downloaded the audible version. It's excellent. And uh, it's not read by Jim Dale, but it's one of those guys that's just phenomenal at reading that stuff. And uh, he's loving it. So eventually he'll be able to watch the movie and then we'll make our way into the Lord of the Rings. So let's move into community participation because I am very aware of the time and... All right, so let me just turn that off. Um, I am very aware of the time and I know it just, it gets very, very long. I didn't get a chance to do the random number generator from um, August. I'm really sorry, you guys. It's just kind of been one of those weeks, um, but I will get to that over the next, uh, over this week and we'll announce um, the August winner for the little fiber pack that I put together. But for September, you can comment here on YouTube. Don't put it in the live stream, but put it in the actual comments here on YouTube um, or in the Ravelry episode thread for this month. And I didn't put it in the community uh, in our show notes. So let me just link it here in the live chat and then I'll fix up the, the um, oh, we don't have one, that's why. Okay, I'll fix that later. Anyhow, comment in YouTube. Uh, tell us about the fibers that you dislike spinning and why. So I guess mine would be caracol, but maybe that's just because I haven't been spinning for rugs or carpet. <laughs> Not yet anyways. So our breeding color study on Shetland, that was, it was such a big study for Shetland. It went all the way from January to June, but people are still working on it, which I totally get. And um, we've still got just beautiful projects that are coming through. So this one was from Caitlin. She posted this on Ravelry, just beautiful. Um, these, we had talked about Caitlin's yarns when she had finished them and posted them in the Ravelry group. She dyed her own yarns. So she finally got to knit a project with her Shetland Breeding Color Study. She really struggled to find a pattern. She ended up going with uh, designing a simple scarf pattern with a repeating motif from the pattern Knit Freedom, and it's actually linked in the show notes, so that she could observe the colors. In hindsight, she regrets the stripes. The stripes aren't her favorite, but they also fail to show off the color management that she did while spinning. I totally get that, Caitlin, because I've had projects like that too. However, this is really, really effective as well, um, and I think you did a beautiful job. So. I, I see what you mean though about the stripes. Like um, I can see that that tension there where, you know, it, it would be nice to see how the, how the yarns knit up, but the cowl is absolutely beautiful. Towards the end of knitting, I started to run out of yarn. So I ended up seaming the ends together for a cowl. I think it's beautiful. The three Shetland bases make for really different yarns and the Murat base is dense and a bit rustic, causing the fabric to hold its shape rather than to drape. I wonder if that'll be actually quite warm though. Um, just because it's a little bit denser, it'll hold the, hold the, the warm air in. I think I would have picked out a pattern first and tried to match the amount of color and fiber to the project needs. But overall, I learned a lot about my spinning process and preferences all while experiencing new fiber that I'm thoroughly in love with. Of course you are. Cause it's Shetland, right? <laughs> Me too. Beautiful work, Caitlin. And I loved uh, following your journey. Looks beautiful. This is from Megan. Uh, these are her finished photos of her breeding color study in Fading Point by Hohi Locatelli. 
Uh, the first four colors are the Shetland Handspun Breeding Color Study and the last two were Commercial Yarn Stash. This project is massive at almost 2,000 yards of fingering weight yarn. It will keep me very warm this winter and there's a lot more photos on our project page if you're interested. Beautiful work, Megan. And I loved seeing the actual finished modeled photos because we've shown the yarn before and shown parts of your project. But seeing where you started from and then all the way through to the finish, it's just fantastic. It's funny actually, you guys, because I never knit cowls. Um, Samantha says, I love it. I need a cowl. Um, and M Megan also says, I love that cowl. The funny thing is I never knit cowls. Like I never knit that kind of stuff. But Eve was working on a cowl the other morning while we were doing... Um, uh, this the sweater modification stuff together and she was showing me some of her stuff that she's working on and I was like I want that I want one of those and then I was looking at Caitlin's project and I was like I want that too <laughs> so maybe maybe I need to do some I, I'm, I'm really I'm, I'm a bit sick of sweaters so uh, and just the the mammothness of knitting sweaters so I think maybe I just need to do some different stuff and this has been really inspiring this is from our other Megan. We've got a few Megans in our community. Oh shoot, where did her thing go? Where is she? Oh, here she is. Okay, so this is for Spindle Spun Summer. Um, so this is going on until the summer solstice, which is coming up really, really quick. Um, so please, um, once we switch over into the autumnal equinox, please start submitting your yardage. I have started a... Um, uh, a um, uh, thread on Ravelry for your yardage. Please keep it um, keep it chatter free. No chit chat. Just post your photo and your yardage that you spun on your singles. I have put in the post how to calculate your yardage, but it's exactly the same as how we do it for Spinzilla and Spin Together. But it's in the post and it's there in the live chat for you. So this is from Megan spinning lots of yardage in many colors on her Turkish spindles. She stores all of them in her basket and carries around the spinning that she has as she has a moment. She split the 10 grams into two spinning, into two um, bundles to spin to two, sorry, split the 10 grams into two and then she's spinning to two spindles for two sets of singles. And then the next day she rolls them into a plying ball and then the next day she plies them together. So five weeks left, she's hoping to finish all of the colors. Beautiful. Cause this was back, I think she posted this back in August. Really, really lovely photos too, uh, Megan. Really, really amazing actually. This is from our other Caitlin. First handful of spins earlier on the left and the most recent on the right. All our merino top two ply spun and plied on drop spindles. The biggest challenge has been managing joins between lengths of fiber. I think I'm getting a good feel for drafting consistent singles and I've graduated to actually standing to spin, which is awesome over the carpet so that she doesn't break her spindles. <laughs> it's so magical to watch fluff of fiber turn into lengths of yarn with just a gentle pull and twist. Yes, isn't that incredible, Caitlin? So then her second photo here, this is the merino one. And then the second one is she's been so busy. She started spinning some beautiful brown alpaca. That's at the bottom there. She still has more of the roving to spin, but then she got sidetracked with a sampler of different sheep breeds. So the uh, left to right on the top row is Shropshire, uh, North Ronald C, Ronald Z, Radnor, and Icelandic. And then the alpaca is below. So that's um, uh, Shropshire, North Ronald C, Radnor, and Icelandic. Beautiful. The Icelandic is definitely the most challenging spin so far. She's absolutely in love with the soft oatmeal co color of the Ronald C and she might and she and I have a mighty need to knit up a pair of Radnor or Shropshire socks yes so far my two drop spindles have spun over a thousand yards of singles that's awesome I imagine they'll continue to be my trusty little workhorses even if I acquire more spindles or a wheel beautiful Caitlin well done this is from Antonia I brought, I brought my wheel back from vacation at my parents' place, so spindle spinning has slowed down a bit, but I managed to ply my mohair spin, and I really like how it turned out. Uh, I got 165 meters or 105 grams and around 16 wraps per inch, 495 meters for spindle spun summer. That's amazing. So make sure, Antonia, that you po uh, post that in the um, uh, thread. Some dyed fin, uh, throw it, it more, it more reminds me of Let Lopi. I'm spinning it as a thick singles accordingly. 
and uh, curious how it'll turn out after finishing. How do you usually finish toothy singles yarns? Uh, so let's talk about that for a minute. And then she also started a new spindle spin, some lovely golden fiber, which was a blend of BFL, mohair and silk. That's this one here. I spin, it spins up like a dream and I'm not sure, but I'm not sure I'll finish it before the end of spindle spun summer. September is always so busy, isn't it though? So true. Oh, the sun is just coming in and it's just beautiful, but it's blowing me out. So I'm sorry. Um, toothy singles. Um, I would fold them a little bit. So hot and cold water. So put them into some hot water, then into some cold, then into some hot, then into some cold. I wouldn't bang them about a whole lot and I wouldn't, I wouldn't beat them up a ton, but I would definitely, um, um, fold them a little tiny bit and, um, and then just leave them to hang and hang and dry. So, and don't, don't weight them or anything. This is from Diana. Love these yarns. All of her unfinished two ply from her various spindle experiments over the summer. She's really excited about the light blue yarn spun on a Turkish spindle. That yarn is dorset blended with a bit of each of the fibers from the exotics spin box. It's smooth and has a sheen. Lo looking forward to seeing how all the yarn changes once she washes and finishes them. That blue yarn, uh, Diana, is just beautiful. Um... Oh, thank you, Diana. She's going to bring the Hound Design Lace Spindle and the Rolex for the prizes for Spindle Spun to the Guild Meeting. Thank you so much. Don't worry, uh, Dion. My yardage is hilariously small as well. <laughs> this is from Kelly. Three weeks ago, I went... Uh, to a fiber retreat called Yarny Camp in uh, McCall, Idaho. It was a perfect four days of workshops, knitting, spinning, and good friends. I was inspired to start some fingerless mitts with my most recent spindle spun and plied Frankenstein, that it, which is made from miscellaneous pieces of merino fiber from wound up fiber arts. I didn't have a pattern, so just knit one by one rib, and I ran out of yarn after starting the second mitt, so now I'm spinning up more so I can finish. Amazing. Obviously these two mitts will go far from, will be far from matching, but I know they will be favorites because they originated during a beautiful weekend in a beautiful place. Love that. That is called an emotional yarn. And they are some of the best yarns that we make. This is from Angela. Um, Angie, we, um, she did a video on her YouTube channel of um, some of her tips and tricks for support spindle spinning. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check that out. Um, she's been spurred on by Mary Jo. Mary Jo is spinning this time round for spindle spun. It's just been awesome. Uh, it's a reminder that this sale is coming to an end. So I've decided to return to the, to the spinning that my, was it my, that was my original goal for spindle spun summer before she got all distracted with all the other spinning projects. I know how you feel. I was aiming to spin through a sample box of fibers that has been in my stash for a couple of years and she's managed to spin five of the 20 plus in the box. That's a lot. Um, and I mean, even just the five here are just absolutely beautiful, but another 15, that's crazy. So, um, she, uh, in my defense, these were first colorful samples. Th these first colorful samples were a blend that included some Manx Lochtin, which led me off on a tangent as I knew I also had a piece of Manx in raw fleece form and decided that maybe they could all be spun and worked up into one project together. That would be amazing. That meant, of course, that I had to go off and wash and card my fleece. <laughs> course, right? Hopefully I can get them all done and then move on to finish up, um, at least on the spindle, um, works in progress before the end of this, this sal. I hope so. I hope so. Fingers crossed for you. This is uh, zero to hero. So these are some stuff, some things that people have been working on for zero to hero. We're almost done. Um, this is from Tracy zero to hero is all the way from, um, uh, fiber spun, spinning and then um, some sort of a garment or a woven thing, something that's finished. So um, this is all like hashtag sweater spin, hashtag use your hand spun, hashtag spin all the things, hashtag weave with hand spun. Um, so this is sort of, you know, going from, from like all the way through the process. So Tracy shares her finished shifty sweater. She started with these skeins that were mostly a sport fingering two ply. She was going for a subtle contrast this time, lots of bits and bobs left over. She was trying to match the arms to the body the best she could. I think you did a really beautiful job, Tracy. Well done. Beautiful. I remember when Tracy posted these yarns and, um, 
uh, we were talking about about them and to see the finished sweater is really really awesome this is from Claudia um, I spun up two BFL braids from created by LCB she had fun spinning one singles on the wheel and one singles on her supported spindles and then she plied on the wheel for both braids she knew she wanted to make a stripey project with them and the rocket tee from Tannis Laval Lavalle was just perfect I'm so proud and in love with my hand spun tee. I think it just turned out amazing, Claudia. Beautiful, beautifully well done. And I love the colors. Uh, I have loved seeing all the spindles people have. I've learned about new makers and styles. Yeah, it's so true, Diana. And I hope that if we can keep it going, that people will continue to share and really try to keep spindles front and center in, in, in their making process. That's, that's my hope. Uh, this is from Elise, my first hand spun socks. I made these from 100% Polworth top. I stripped it down four times and spun each one very fine end to end and made a traditional four ply. I was so pleased to have it come out a sock weight yarn that she split it into two balls and knit the socks concurrently with alternating stripes toe up so that she could use as much of the yarn as possible. The colors started and finished kind of muddy, but honestly, these will match with a lot of the kind of clothing that I like to wear anyways. I love this color and I love how it turned out, Elise. Really beautiful, well done. This is from Sam. I love this sweater. Finished my throwback cardigan by Andrea Maori. I'm so thrilled with it. Three ply worsted with using a mix of Merino, Corydale, Shetland, and Polworth. Excuse the rubbish photos. It is 10 p.m. on a Sunday night. I will ask Hubby to take some better photos in the daylight. So fantastic, Sam. I love how that turned out. So this is spin, a sample spinning and just our general play, um, which I really love highlighting. The creation of something new is not accomplished by the intellect, but by the play instinct. As adults in the Western world, we need to be playing a lot more. And uh, this is from Nicole. The skein is mostly dry, which is good because it's about to go out the door as a gift to my friend who is very generous with her time and her car. She helped me pick up my second wheel this summer. That's awesome, Nicole. Beautiful skein. This is from Sue. I just, these colors. And she's been swatching with these in the Slack channel and doing an amazing, just an amazing study of all of these different um, uh feral patterns with these yarns so if if you're on the slack channel you have to check it out it's just phenomenal uh just under a month's worth of spinning all wound up and ready for my feral class a wonderful learning journey and i'm pleased with the results the large cake is the main color so that's that beautiful dark purple at the top I will definitely need to spin more of this down the track. Gradients in blue, purple, red, violet, and magenta. The bottom row is potential pops of color. I think I have enough light colors. If not, I'll need to blend one notch lighter for some of the colors. Amazing. And definitely check out Sue's photos of her, of her Feral class, because let, let me tell you. <laughs> Incredible. This is from Brittany. So I collect all the discard fiber scraps and then she when then she finally got to card it all together and spin a mystery skein. It is so dreamy. Isn't that cool? So she keeps all of her all of her scraps, fiber scraps and all the all the waste and junk. And then she spun it all together. So cool. <laughs> Zan says totally off topic but I hate twisting fringe. Yes. <laughs> This is from Kelly. This is weaving. So this is from Kelly. Her latest weaving is done. Despite her best efforts, the different wools made the finishing a tad bumpy. I think once I cut, sew, and finish, it'll all look fine. The first photo is all over, but the light is a tad weird outside. So the second photo shows the actual colors. Um, all hand spun browns are natural shades. Blues and greens I dyed using various indigo, marigold, and osage treatments. Amazing. Love this. And I think once you uh, wash and iron it, I think a lot of that will come out, Kelly. I think it's going to be awesome. And this last one is from Dion. This is her, she's totally excited, her first woven piece off the loom and ready to be turned into a messenger bag. I hope you post the photos of your finished bag, Dion. That'll be really fun. It's 13 by 38 inches or 35 by 96 centimeters. And she should have enough to make a little change purse. Fantastic.
Thank you so much everybody for sharing all of the things that you share. It really makes a big difference um, to everybody else, you know, watching on the show, but also in the Slack channel on the Ravelry group, um, being able to see what people are working on, their reflections, all, all these things. So, oh, it was washed and ironed. That's Kelly's uh, um, weaving. Oh, that's funny. Oh, okay. So it still is a little bit wiggly, but it looks amazing. It looks beautiful. Um, I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your week and uh, rest of your weekend and a, a good rest of your week. My kids start school on Monday, so I'm super excited for them to go into their classes and to uh, have their first day at school. And um, yeah, we've got some stuff happening in our community over the course of this next week. So we've got the Wool Circle on Tuesday. Please mark your calendars. That's at 7 a.m. Pacific. And um, we've got a Maker Morning coming up this Thursday at uh, 6.30 Pacific AM. So if you guys are around and can join, the links will be posted on Patreon as well as in the Slack channel if you're in the Slack channel. So uh, hopefully we will see you there. We also have a Queries and Explorations for those who are part of that on Saturday after the live stream. So I'll look forward to seeing you guys all then. And I hope you have a very spinny week and that you get lots and lots and lots done. And I will see you guys next time. Bye everyone.